Hello. So this is our first slightly more serious application in economics that we can deal with based on what we learned so far. The matrices and in particular the Gaussian elimination in solving linear systems. I'm saying more serious in the sense that now you really have to take your time to actually understand uh, what the story is behind the math. Don't rush to actually uh, do the math. In fact, as you'll see once you go over the homework, the math is not actually that difficult. Uh, it all boils down to solving a linear system. Uh, it can have any number of equations and unknowns. Uh, although in, in this application, the number of equations and unknowns is always the same. So you have basically a square matrix of the coefficients of that system. But I mean, the size of the system can be any number, two, three, four, I mean, four uh, equations, four unknowns and so on. We will deal only with two or three, um, mostly three uh, unknowns in this application. So the system itself, you'll see, it's not difficult to solve. But in order to actually set up the system from a word problem, you really have to understand the um, the model and what the what you try to do actually with the math. So please allocate a generous amount of time to understand the, um, the real story behind the model that we're going to establish later. So take some time to write this down. The lesson is named the closed Leon TF model which is um, based on what we're going to call later the input and output matrix. There's another model, it's called the open Leontief model. I don't cover that one, although once you understand the closed one, um, that's a different type of setting, but the, the math is not that much different. Uh, it's still based on some an input and output matrix. So let's actually describe the, um, the goal here. I mean, what we're trying to do. Suppose we have what we call three linked, three or more, I mean, in my example is three, but suppose we have a number of linked industries. In our case, three linked industries. And so by that we mean that each of these industries makes a product that is needed by all of them in making their product. Now, in practice, of course, it's not just three because industries, especially big ones, uh, don't need just three products. They need a large variety of products, you know, maybe hundreds of them. So this, this input output matrix could be actually extremely large. But for simplicity and to understand the concept, let's imagine that all they need are three products. So imagine that these three industries to make their products, they need just three products, each of them made by one of them, essentially. So each, each of them makes a product that is needed so each of them makes one of them that is needed by all three. That's the key word. All three of them need um, these products to make their own products. So the question that we're going to address is how much do they need to produce relative to each other in order to make their product? And we'll make these questions more precise as we move along with, with our example. Um, and you'll see that this, this type of questions obviously is important in, in business planning. And it's not at all intuitive. You, it, you can't just guess the, the quantity needed, right? So in other words, if you just want to make, um, uh, if you want to just to produce so that you make what you need to make, how much you need to do relative to each other? Because the amount of consumption of each product differs, right? I mean, each of them needs a certain percentage of each other's product. So let's um, illustrate with a theoretical example. Let's say you have three companies or firms, A, B, C. And let's say that A makes energy. It's an energy company. But in doing so, in order to make energy, it needs energy as well. So some of the stuff they produce is for internal use right? They, they have their own machines to run. They need some equipment. We won't get too specific here, some industrial equipment, and they need manpower. Uh, let's say company B makes equipment. And it needs all three above, right? It also needs energy. Some of the equipment they produce Again, they may need it for internal use. They also need manpower. 
Finally, C, let's say, is in, provides manpower. Let's say it's like um, some company that, you know, job placements or in one way or another just is able to produce employees for various needs. So it produces manpower, provides manpower. They might have their own energy needs. Maybe they have buildings, whatever. Everybody uses energy, obviously. They may need some equipment. Again, not probably at the same degree that uh, the other two need, but they probably need some equipment and they also need their own manpower. Again, this is not, and I don't pretend this is to be a realistic uh, illustration basically, but imagine that you have essentially these three companies that are tightly linked. Uh, in practice, of course, they need to produce more than they need it for each other. And that will be basically the open Leontiev model. But for now, we're going to focus just on this main question. And again, read it again and make sure you pause uh, if you want to read it again and to make sure you understand it. You know, how much do they need? The question is, how much do they need to produce just to make their product? So we're not talking for now about making even more than that as they normally do to make a profit. So the question is, how much do you need to produce relative to each other so that whatever they produce, they use 100% for their own needs to produce their, uh, their product. So that's why it's called closed model, right? Because the question is the quantity um, of production for internal use by all three, essentially. So how do we establish how much they need to produce? Well, let's say the managers of these three companies, they meet at a table and each of them specifies how their product happens to be used by the other uh, companies. So for example, the manager of company A says, well, each unit, uh, each unit of A, and by unit, it depends on the product, of course. I mean, let's say, you know, for energy is me measured in watts, uh, equipment maybe in terms of number of machines, we're not, we don't need to get too specific, but whatever is the unit that it measures their quantity, uh, let's say company A says that each of our unit, each unit of A um, is used fractionally by the following, uh, in the following proportions by all the others. So two sixths of it is used in making um, a unit of A, so that's basically the internal use. Okay, so two sixths of it, we're going to use um, rational fractions and then we can show an example with decimals. But uh, this fraction of one unit of A is used in making a unit of A. So that's basically the energy needed to produce energy. Again, not too realistic probably, but, but imagine that's the internal use to make a unit of A. The rest of them is used by B and C, right? So let's say one over six of it is used uh, in making a unit of B. And then the remaining has to add up to one because again, the idea is to see how the use is split between the other uh, companies. Three over six is used in making a unit of C. So each company notices that their energy is spent this way. Uh, so the demand of energy internal and external is split this way. Each unit is split into two sixths for internal production, one over six for B, three over six for C. Notice it adds, to, adds, up, excuse me, adds up to one. B and C come to the table with the same report. Each unit of B is used and let's actually write fewer words to save some time. So let's say each unit of B is used two fourths for a unit of A. So A needs two fourths essentially of each unit of B to make their own production. Uh, one fourth of B is used for a unit of B. And finally, one fourth is used to produce a unit of C. <clears throat> it has to add up to one again. And finally, C says each of our units, so each unit of C 
is split into one fourth for A, for making a unit of A, uh, one fourth in making a unit for company B, and finally uh, the remaining two fourths in making a unit for C. So notice it's not clear how much they need to produce relative to each other just to cover the internal needs. When I say internal need, I mean uh, when you look at these three industries as a whole. So they meet at the table and they say, we know each of us what the internal need is, right? I mean, for example, company A knows that they need two over six of their own products to make energy. You know, B knows that they need one fourth of what they produce to make B but they also need each other's product. So then as a whole, because this is a linked industry, right? As a whole, how much do they need to produce just to cover their internal needs? So whatever they produce, they have to consume in making the very products, right? That is the question. And we don't know, which is the reason why we're gonna use variables and set up a system. So suppose that um, X denotes the number of units of A, Y denotes the number of units of company B, and Z the number of units of C. And the question is, how much is, should be X, Y, Z just to cover the internal need of these three linked companies? <clears throat> And basically we end up with a system, but here is the time to go slow and make sure you go carefully to understand how the system is set up. To make these units, X of A, Y of B, Z of C, you need to consume the very, the very same units in various proportions, given by this information that I just wrote uh, previously. So on the left-hand side, let's write down X, Y, and Z. So we have basically three equations. And you, think, you say the following way. <clears throat> to make X units of A, let's look at the information above. To make X units of A, um, I'm gonna need two over six units of B. That is basically the first line over there. So we need two over six X. We're gonna need two over four of whatever B produces. So remember, two fourths of how uh, whatever B produces is needed to make the units of A. So in the production of X, you need to add two fourths of whatever B produces, two fourths times A, Y. And also you're gonna need a quarter, one over four of whatever the quantity C produces. Remember we denoted by Z the quantity that C produces, so therefore you need to add one over four times Z. Um, again, we don't know what X, Y, Z is. That is the question we try to find, but just to match the internal need, right? So in producing X, Y, Z, we need to have this consumption on the right. Uh, so we need to balance these quantities essentially. And now you look at the second row for each of them, right? What do you need to produce a Y? Well, if I go back to A, it says that one over six of whatever A produces is needed in making a unit of B. So therefore we're gonna need one over six times X to make Y units um, of B. Uh, moving on here, the second row on the information for B, we also need one fourth of Y. And then also in making B, we need a one fourth of whatever is the Z, uh, C production, Z units of C. And then finally, we look at the last row to make Z, in other words, to make Z units of C, we need three over six units of A. You look at the last row in the, in the information provided by A. Uh, then you're going to need a quarter of the production of B, so one fourth Y. And finally, two quarters of the production of C, which again is denoted by Z.
A, B, C again are the names of the companies, right? I mean, X, Y, Z denotes the number of units of each type. So we end up with a linear system. And you'll see it in many formulas. This is given in a matrix form. Now we know matrix multiplication and we can actually denote these quantities that we need to find uh, you know, X, Y, Z by big X. And you can actually write this system as big X equals the matrix given by these proportions, two over six, two over four, one over four, one over six, um, one over four, one over four, three over six, one over four, and two over four, multiplied by big X. Because um, you can multiply a matrix by a column. This, this is sometimes called by M, right? The, the matrix given by these proportions. And this matrix M is called the input output matrix. We're going to solve the system um, on the second page, but I just want to point out that in a very compact form, the closed Leontief model is illustrated by a system given by this matrix multiplication. This is simply the notation of this system using matrices. You can multiply a three by three matrix with a um, three by one matrix, which is the column X, Y, Z. And you, that gives you a more compact form of the um, system that you need to solve. You don't actually, you don't actually need this because this notation, this shortcut notation, because all you need to do is to solve the system anyway. So you have to use these equations uh, over here uh, in order to, um, set up the augmented matrix and all that good stuff that we're going to talk about pretty soon. Okay, so how do we solve the system? Now notice we need to combine these terms because X appears in two positions in the first equation and the same thing for Y in the second equation. So we need to move X, Y, Z on the right hand side. Uh, and I'm going to start with the right hand side and uh, then uh, solve the system. So we have basically two over six X minus X plus two over four Y plus one over four Z equals zero. Uh, on the second equation, you're gonna subtract Y from one over four Y because you move Y to, to the other side. And then similarly, you're gonna subtract Z from 2 fourth, uh, 2 over 4 Z. <clears throat> so we factor X. I'm going to do the computation on the second page immediately. And then we can finally start and uh, solve the system. See if it fits, three over six X, one over four Y um, plus one over four minus one Z. We're gonna write it again on the second page. I just want to emphasize where that comes from. Okay, so we have to group the X, Y and Z, simplify and then, um, and then finally solve the system. Um, we're going to get back to this because in the algorithm, you can start with the input output matrix and subtract the one on the main diagonal because the, the effect of moving X on the right hand side of the, of the system uh, is subtracting actually one from the main diagonal of the input output matrix. So notice you have two over six minus one, um, one over four minus one, one over four minus one on the diagonal. Uh, and that's the effect of subtracting X, Y, Z when you move those terms uh, from left to right. And we're going to move along with solving, like I said, uh, this, this system.
Okay, so I wrote again the system and let's do actually that computation in parentheses on the main diagonal. And again, when you see the recipe actually on the, on the book, if you, if you um, want to take a look at it, when the, um, when the system is wrote like in the previous page as x equals m minus x, the output input output matrix, uh, moving, like I said, that column to the right hand side is equivalent to saying that you subtracted the identity matrix from the main diagonal, from the output, from the input output matrix. So uh, basically, if you are given already, as I, I will show you in the example, the next example, if you are given already the input output matrix and you have to solve the closed Leon TF model, you start by subtracting the identity matrix and then setting up the system with the zero on the right hand side. Uh, the subtraction of the identity matrix is the same as subtracting one from the main diagonal. Because if you subtract the identity matrix, which is uh, in the three by three case, one, zero, 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 one, zero, 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 one, uh, all the zeros have no effect, but the one on the main diagonal means you just uh, take out one from the main diagonal of the original system. So two over six minus one, that's um, uh, minus four over six. So the actual system is gonna be minus four over six X plus two over four Y plus one over four Z. Notice that I didn't actually simplify by two. Uh, it's better to actually leave the, the denominators as they are for now, uh, because the um, uh, because it might be easier later on to see what you need to multiply in order to simplify the terms. And then one over six x one over four minus one is minus three over four y plus one over four z equals zero. Three over six x plus one over four y. Um, 2 over 4 minus 1 over 4, that's um, minus 2 over 4. <clears throat> z equals 0. Uh, I forgot to mention, but I'll say it again on the next example. If you set up the input-output matrix, each column adds up to 1. Uh, so I'm going to write it down next on, with the next example, because right now they don't add up to 1, because you already subtracted the main diagonal, you know, and... So that's different, but the original M, uh, each column should add up to one. Uh, so let's actually solve this system uh, with the augmented matrix. So the augmented matrix is gonna be minus four over six, two over four, one over four, one over six, minus three over four, one over four, three over six, one over four, minus two over four, uh, excuse me augmented by the right hand side which is zero 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 in this case so here's an important advice that i'd like you to follow you're not obligated to follow but you will probably because otherwise it's just too much of a pain before you start with the gaussian elimination multiply each row by the common denominator Remember, you can multiply any row by any non-zero constant. That doesn't change the solution of the system. And you should do that in order to simplify the coefficient so that you don't have to deal with fractions. It's just much easier to uh, do the Gauss elimination without fractions. Just multiply by a convenient number, which in this case is the common denominator to eliminate the fractions. So the least common denominator, because you don't want to have a bigger entries than necessary. So if, if you see here, you have six, four, four. So you have six and four, the, the possible denominators. Just multiply by 12 each row, and then you proceed with the Gauss elimination, because that again simplifies the, um, the entries in the model. So if I multiply minus four over six by 12, let me just give you an example here. That simplifies to minus four times two, which is minus eight. And the rest of them do them in your mind, uh, if you can, right? So two over four times 12, that makes it six. Uh, one over four times 12, that makes it three, and then zero. Then we have two, 
minus nine. Uh, what else? My uh, three and zero, and then uh, six. Through the four times twelve, through the six times twelve, and then three, <clears throat> and then minus six. And we're going to produce the Rauch Lone form and solve for x, y, and z. <clears throat> okay, let's see if we have one easy way to go about it without maybe involving fractions. I don't think so. We can't really avoid fractions if we look carefully here. Uh, I'm going to do still a little bit of a trick. So we need to divide row 1 by minus 8. That's, as f that's what you have to do to produce the first leading one. There's no way around it. Um, but then the zeros below that leading one, we can actually make them... Um, well, let's see if we could do that. Um, 2 minus 9, 6, 3 minus 6. Um, trying to see if I, I could do that uh, a little bit faster so that I don't have to deal with too many... Um, yeah, let's make a 0 below it by multiplying row 2 by 4 add it to row 1, and you're going to change row 2 this time around. And then we're going to multiply row 2, the old row 2, by minus 3. And we're going to add it to row 3 to produce the 0, just to make it a little bit faster. There are many ways to go about it, so you can do that, but uh, just be careful with the computation if you have different intermediate steps. So what do we get if we do that? So if I divide by minus 8, we're going to have 1 minus 6 over 8 minus 3 over 8 and 0. <clears throat> and then we said 4 times row 2 plus row 1, which makes it 0. That was the whole goal. Uh, let's see. Um, 4 times row 2, that's minus 9 times 4 plus 6. That's minus 36 plus 6, that's minus 30. And then 4 times 3, that's 12 plus 3, that's 15. The last entry is 0 because you, you only have combinations with 0 there. <clears throat> and let's see. Yeah. And then I said minus 3 row 2 plus row 3. So minus 3 times 2 plus 6, uh, 0. Uh, then we have minus 9 times minus 3 plus 3. That makes it 27 plus 3, 30. And then finally, um, minus 3 times 3, minus 6, uh, minus 9 minus 6. Six, that's minus 15 and then zero so notice and look carefully if you look carefully the last two equations are the same I mean are basi basically equivalent which will suggest that you will have infinitely many solutions which should always be the case I'm going to comment on this a little bit uh, later but if you do the algebra correctly your last row should be zero when you're done. So notice for to produce the next leading one, I'm going to divide by 30. So now I do row two divided by, excuse me, by minus 30. That's, that's the only possible step. So we have zero, one. And now we can simplify maybe a little bit. 15 over minus 30, that makes it minus one half. <clears throat> And then to make zero below, the easiest thing is just to add row two plus row three and change it to row three. And that gives you zero, 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 zero. So if you are correct, your Leontief REF, so the REF when you proceed with the Leontief model should be like that. 
two leading ones if you have a three by three matrix, but the last row should be zero when you're done, when you're done with the REF. Uh, this is a consequence of basically the problem you're trying to solve. Because um, uh, if we think logically, and we'll comment on that once we finish this, um, this problem, um, it's actually understandable why you don't have actually a specific number of, uh, I mean, a unique solution, but infinitely many solutions. Because the question is production relative to each other, not absolute production. So in other words, whether, whether these three companies decide to produce, um, let's say, one unit each or, I mean, regardless of what, how much they need to produce, the other two companies need to produce enough to make the production possible. So, for example, let's say company A needs to produce one unit. Then automatically B and C need to produce just enough so that it's, this is possible to make that one unit. But then company A could say, I want to produce 100 units. And again, B and C need to produce what they produce for one unit, but then multiply by 100 essentially to, to compensate for uh, extra production. So the question is the relative production with respect to each other, not the absolute production. So that's how you actually have infinitely many um, solutions. So let's actually write down the system now. So we have the REF. Now the, uh, now the first equation is X. Uh, minus uh, 6 over 8z, excuse me, 6 over 8y minus 3 over 8z equals 0, y minus 1 over 2z equals 0, and the last one doesn't matter because it's uh, 0 equals 0. So we solve for the leading variables, so y equals z over 2, from the last equation, substitute it in the first equation. Um, let's simplify this a little bit. So two cancels with six. And now we can combine three Z minus three Z, that's six Z. And then X is six Z over eight. <clears throat> So the solution is x equals 6z over 8, y equals uh, z over 2, and z is arbitrary. And actually, let's, let's simplify it even more, because 6 over 8 can be simplified by 2. So x is um, 3z over 4, y equals z over 2, and z is arbitrary. <clears throat> All right, so before we move on to the last example, because I want to do one more, uh, let's interpret this a little bit, because again, this is usually confusing in the beginning. How come you have infinitely many solutions uh, and then, you know, Z can be any number? So remember the question is, what, what was the question? How much do they need to produce each so that they actually be able to produce this? So just the internal production needed to produce some number of units. So there is many possibilities, right? Because you have a multiplicative um, quantity of this, right? I mean, you want to produce, um, each company wants to produce a certain number of units and that implicates that the other two companies need to produce certain amounts. So if you want, it's like from the point of view of the company for which we have this uh, arbitrary variable, although either of them can be an arbitrary variable. So remember, uh, Z denotes the quantity that company C needs to produce. So it's like answering the following question. Let's say, um, and sometimes this can be given in terms of money actually. So let's say the company C says, I need uh, to produce, um, let's say 1,000 uh, worth $1,000 worth of product. So that means Z is 1,000. So the question is, with re in, res uh, in terms of dollars amounts, right? I mean, in terms of dollar values, how much A and B need to produce? And this is what this model gives you because you go back to the solution and you say, okay, if 
company C needs to produce $1,000 worth of a product, well, it turns out that X needs to produce three times 1,000 over four, um, let's see, which is um, uh, 250 times three, uh, which is 15, seven, fifty dollars And then company B needs to produce 1,000 over two worth of value, which is $500. So the Leontief model, the closed model, gives you this relative need of production just to make uh, those units. And, and notice that the same answer can be given from the point of view of each of these companies. Uh, if X wants to produce 750 worth of value, that means Z uh, or company C needs to produce $1,000, company Y needs to produce $500. So it's a relative uh, level of production just for internal need. In practice, of course, they produce more than that, but this model gives you exactly what they need just to be able to make their product. The actual amount, it's actually irrelevant, right? I mean, in, in the sense that you can start with any value you want for one of them, and the model will give you the fraction that the other two companies need to produce. So if you want the, the real answer are these fractions, three over four, one over two, um, which will tell you the relative size of production to meet internal needs. So we're gonna move on to another example. We go a little bit faster on the last one, starting with the input output matrix, uh, and then uh, we'll finish up with maybe one or two extra remarks. All right, so let's start with another example. This time, let's start already with an input, um, an input output matrix. Sometimes those level of relative productions needed are given in decimal formats or in percentages, I mean. So let's say the input output matrix is 0 0.3, 0 0.1, 0 0.4, 0 0.2, 0 0.6, 0 0.2, and 0 0.5, 0 0.3, 0 0.4. And notice that if this matrix is correctly written, um, notice that each uh, column adds up to one. Uh, because remember, each column represents the split of each unit. So you have X, Y, Z, right? I mean, each, each um, three types of, uh, or three quantities for each product. Um, you can think of the rows representing the companies and the columns representing each unit that is split into various companies. So for example, um, X units of A are distributed between A, B, and C right, by column. So that's why they have to add up to one. Uh, in this type of story, for example, they will say that each unit, I'm not going to write all, th all three of them, but the interpretation of the first column is that each unit of A uh, is used 30% uh, by A, 20% uh, by B, 50% by C. Uh, so in making um, C units, C needs 50% of whatever X makes and so on and so forth. So some problems are given the way I gave you the first one from a story and you have to come up with the input output matrix or like in this case, we already started with the input output matrix and we have to solve for the um, closed Leontief model or the internal level of production. So remember you set up this equation and by x then we have the column of the unknown so x means number of units of a uh, y means number of units of b and z number of units of c this equality means that you're trying to solve um, the relative level of production just to meet the internal needs whatever you produce you consume internally by all three and remember, when you move those X, Y, Z to the right-hand side, that's equivalent to subtracting the identity matrix from the main diagonal um, and then setting the system equal to zero. So your starting point should be 
subtracting one from the main diagonal. And you can establish the augmented matrix at this step as well. So you could do, you could do it more efficiently or faster if you want by subtracting one from the main diagonal and already augmented the matrix with zero, zero, zero. Um, again, if that's not clear, just pause, rewind and see again where that minus one came from. That just, that's just subtracting X, Y, Z when you move um, the left side to the right hand side. Just make sure you do this computation correctly. So 0.3 minus one is minus 0 0.7. 0 0.1, 0 0.4, 0 0.2, minus 0 0.4, 0 0.2, 0 0.5, 0 0.3, and minus 0.6. I forgot the zeros. <clears throat> Once again, make sure you multiply by a convenient coefficient each row so that you don't deal with tedious computation, decimals in this case. So because each of them is a decimal, uh, one decimal basically, it makes sense to multiply each row by 10. So that we have, we can work with integers. And then we're gonna see how we proceed with um, um, Gaussian elimination. Usually you can't avoid fractions in these problems, but if you're lucky, you're lucky, right? I mean, here, notice that the easiest thing to make a one, which won't involve fractions, is to divide row two by two and then interchange it with row two, uh, with row one. And that will give me a one in the appropriate position without involving, um, without introducing fractions. Uh, next steps is to make zeros below the first leading one. So we're going to do seven times row one plus row two. And then we change row two. And then minus five times row one plus row three. And that will replace row three. All right, so let's see. Seven times one minus seven, zero. Minus two times seven, that's minus 14. Plus one makes it minus 13. Uh, 7 times 1 plus 4, that's 11. Minus 5 times 1 plus 5 is 0. Minus 5 times minus 2 plus 3 makes it 13. And then finally, minus 1 times 5 minus 6, that's minus 11 and then 0. Look carefully that the last two rows are essentially the same. So when you make the 0, all entries will be 0. We just need to divide row two by minus 13. Um, and then we produce the row echelon form. Zero one minus 11 over 13 and zero. And then let's add row two plus row three. And that's zero, 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 zero. All right, so let's write the equations. X minus two Y plus Z equals zero. Y minus 11 over 13 Z equals zero. Um, we're gonna solve for Y in terms of Z. Okay, so we have x minus, let's move all those guys to the right hand side. So it's 22 over 13 minus 1. Because we, we pull out z. And that makes it, if we multiply by 13, 22 minus 13, that's 9. So x will be 9z over 13. Okay, so the solution will be... Let's write it here. So the solution will be x equals 11 over 13z 
y, uh, oops, sorry, um, x is 9 over 13z, y is 11 over 13z, and z is arbitrary. It's kind of a messy, so arbitrary. Uh, one term that is sometimes confusing in these uh, problems, they say <coughs> solve the Leontief, the closed Leontief model, and take the wage to be, let's say in this case, um, $1,300. I always found this very confusing, like extremely confusing um, in, the, in the book that um, I mentioned here. It is confusing because this suggests like an externality. Um, you know, I mean, they need to do, produce something and so they pay someone a certain wage or salary. And that's very confusing in the closed Leontief model because nobody pays no, nobody, basically. I mean, this is, they pay each other if you want. Uh, wage in this context means basically um, a level of production. Uh, in terms of dollar value, for example, because I mean, the units could be different, right? These are linked industries. I mean, let's say, you know, the energy is measured in watts, the machinery is measured in units, maybe tons for other products, whatever. So just to make it easy and to make these variables possible to be combined in the same model, you can translate the level of production in money worth. Basically, so that is the sen in that sense, you should take the word wage in this case. And the wage value in the problem refers to the arbitrary value um, unknown that you're going to end up with when you solve this system. So the interpretation is like this. Once you solve it, this wage is to be read the following way. What if the third company, the, the company that makes Z units, produces um, or wants to produce $1,300 worth of product, in order to do that, how much product in dollars the other two companies need to produce? This is what the model gives you. So the answer would be 11 over 13 times 1,300, and that'll be 1,100 for company B. And then for company um, A, for the first one, if you plug in 1300, uh, that's going to be $900. So in fact, this wage can be really any number. I mean, they use usually a nice number so that you don't end up with fractions. So notice I chose 1300, you know, just because the denominator was 13. So then to make this, uh, the answer like a nice natural number, right? But, but really what, what matters is the fractional amount of product that they need to produce for any given product uh, of Z. So it can be any number and it's called wage. Uh, but again, the interpretation is uh, dollar worth of the product they want to make. So there are two problems in the homework. Uh, make sure you understand. Uh, I think um, both of them are just with the input output matrix already given, but um, in the web work or also in the exams, you may have um, world problems version of this. So make sure you understand how you actually write that matrix from uh, a given description. And that's it for today.